These memory hacks are going to save you a lot of space. Stop wasting disk space and watch to the end. In the previous video, I showed you my key group workflow. Let's hear the track Three Summers from the last video. I also saved the project the same way I have been saving MPC projects for years. Many of you may save your projects the same way. This is not an optimal workflow when using key groups. Let's do the math. With 92 days in a summer, making 5 beats each day is 460 beats just in one summer. Over three summers, you will have 1,380 beats saved. With 5 key groups per beat on your drive, you have now saved 6,900 key groups or 144,900 samples. On average, I usually put about 84 key groups in an expansion. Divide 6,900 key groups by 84 and you have now saved the equivalent of 82.1 expansions saved on your drives. The 6,900 key groups are copies of what you already have in your expansions. The first method I'm going to show you is by using audio tracks. Select track 1. On the track, click the pencil, then bounce to audio track. The MPC is now in audio mode. A way to know is by the tabs in the lower left corner of the screen. Name the track so we can stay organized. Next, let's name the new sample that was bounced to an audio track. Press menu, project. The word all samples should be selected. Scroll to the letter B, it's in alphabetical order, and look for the sample that starts with the name bounce. This is a prefix MPC adds to let you know it was bounced to a sample. Double tap on the sample to get into sample edit mode. Here we can change the name of the sample and several other parameters about it. Another way to get here from the project window is to tap the edit tab. This is the same as pressing menu sample edit or holding the menu button and pressing pad 14. Since we are only editing the name, we can simply edit it from the project window. Press rename. Delete the prefix bounce so that we are left with the key group name for the sample. Now we know what key group was used to create the loop. Since we are using key groups and custom chord progressions, we need to find out the key we made the song in. Press menu, then tap save. Tap audio mix down. Make sure stereo output is set to out 1 2 and the box is checked. Set your file format, bit depth, and sample rate, then tap export. Select the destination of the file and tap save. In a web browser, go to vocalremover.org and choose key slash BPM finder on the side menu. Click on browse my files and choose the mix down. The results are the key of F sharp major and 83 BPM. We know the BPM is accurate because that is what the sequence is set to. Now that we have that information, we can add it to the name of the sequence and bounced files. Change the name by removing the bounce and instrument prefixes and adding the key and BPM. Go back to the main window. Select the MIDI tab. You will see track 1 has been muted. This is because the key groups have been bounced to a sample and now plays from an audio track. Delete the key group Tyree Crawford by pressing the pencil tab then delete. The prompt will ask are you sure you want to delete this program? Press delete. I'm going to do the same for the rest of the tracks with key groups. For the drums, I will do the same for each sound, then delete the drum program. Before we save the project, we must purge the key groups from the RAM. Although we deleted them from the project, they are still held in RAM. 
Anything held in RAM will be what is saved to the drive. Press Menu, Project, then Purge. Select Unused Samples. Close out of the Purge window and press Save. This time we want to save a new copy of the project in a different location. That way we can compare the file sizes. Instead of tapping Save Project, this time we want Save Project as. Select a location, name it and save it. When we compare the project with audio tracks to the project with key group saved, the file sizes are very different. The key group project is 102 megabytes and contains 144 files. The audio track project is 4.6 megabytes and contains 15 files. To find the percentage saved, we can calculate the difference between the original size and the reduced size and then express that difference as a percentage of the original size. Percentage saved equals original size minus reduced size divided by original size multiplied by 100%. In this case, the original size was 102 megabytes and the reduced size was 4.6 megabytes. Plugging these values into the formula, we get percentage saved equals 102 megabytes minus 4.6 megabytes divided by 102 megabytes times 100% equals 97.5%. So you saved 97.5% of the original size by reducing it to 4.6 megabytes. To find the percentage decrease, we can calculate the difference between the original size and the reduced size, and then express that difference as a percentage of the original size. Percentage decrease equals difference divided by original size times 100%. In this case, the difference between the original size and the reduced size is 102 megabytes minus 4.6 megabytes equals 97.4 megabytes. Plugging these values into the formula, we get percentage decrease equals 97.4 megabytes divided by 102 megabytes times 100% equals 95.7%. So the percentage decrease is 95.7%. Although this was a simple example, it shows almost 100% of the MPC drive space can be cleared. There is no need to resave key groups that you already have saved. If you have more than 8 tracks and want similar results, stay tuned for the next memory management video. There I will show you how to use drum programs like audio tracks, plus the different ways to export your tracks. Thank you for watching this tutorial on MPC. We hope you found it helpful and informative. If you want to learn more about MPC or music production in general, be sure to subscribe to our channel for future videos. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Finally, don't forget to follow us on social media for even more MPC tips and tricks. We appreciate your support and we look forward to seeing you again soon.